Hello, it's Liz with Stampin' on the Rock. Today I'm going to be sharing this card with you. Okay, we're going to be doing a little bit of watercolor. So I'm going to set that aside and let me show you what I'm using. The stamp set is Beautifully Happy. This is a celebration stamp set, so this you may only get this um, through February 28th. So you might want to check that out. But even if you happen to be watching this video past when, like, when celebration's over, Keep watching it anyway, because I think the technique that I'm sharing with you that you'll be be able to use with another stamp set. So this is the stamp set I'm using. It's available to, until February 28th, but stay with me anyway. Um, and you can use this on other stamp sets also. Okay. I use the gingham embossing folder on the card. Okay, that went through the cut and emboss machine. I'm gonna set that aside. I am using Bermuda Bay ink, and I'm also using Memento ink. This one obviously is clearly well-loved, but this is a Memento ink pad. And I'll be using some watercolor pencils, Bermuda Bay watercolor pencil and Old Olive. And then I'll be using a blender pen. Okay. And I think that's it for now. So other than just, you know, um, dimensionals and scissors and a bone folder. Okay, so let's get started with this. My card base is Coastal Cabana. I scored it down the middle here. And then I took the gingham embossing folder. I already did this ahead of time, but let me just show you what I did with that. I scored it, took the embossing folder. And I just put one half in and I took it all the way to where that where that score line is and then ran it through the embossing folder so that way it just comes out on the front. Okay. So then that will be the front of the card. Okay. So there we go. That's the front. All right. Are you loving embossing folders? Have you used them? Um, do you need some more for your stash? You just might. Um, if you haven't gotten into the cut and emboss machine yet, I strongly suggest you suggest that you put that on your list and order that as soon as possible because it's lots of fun and I use it a lot in the cards that I'm making. Okay, the other pieces that I have, this is a Whisper White piece and this is cut from, in the annual catalog, um, it is the Scalloped Contours Dies. It, it was in the catalog last year also. So you might already have it, but otherwise it is in the annual catalog. So scalloped contours dies is where that comes from. So that's what I have right here. And then I have a white piece of paper here. This is the sentiment. So this might change depending on what sentiment you use, but it is three quarter inches depth. And I'm gonna end up cutting it down anyway. So the length really doesn't matter, but it's a two inches. And then I have this, um, this is one eighth inch wide of old olive cardstock. And I'm gonna make some paper ribbon if that's new to you, hang on, and I'll do that in a few minutes. But let's go ahead and do this part. I'm going to stamp the flowers with Memento ink. Anytime you have a stamp that's a little bit larger, sometimes it works better to stamp upside down and take your ink to the stamp rather than your stamp to the ink, okay? So I want to get this well inked. I think we're good there. I just inked this ink pad last night also. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. Let's put this down right here. Um, I think I wanna go a little bit over this direction. Okay. I'm gonna press down in the center. Now let's pull that up, there we go, okay. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to do all my stamping first. Okay, so let's, I'm going to take my words here, and I'm doing the words in Bermuda Bay ink. And my words on this one say, um, that's what it's upside down. It says, for a feeling better kind of day. That's a good one, right? So let's go ahead, and I'm going to stamp that here. For a feeling better kind of day. Pull it off, there we go, we got it. All right, and I'm just gonna, you can leave it just like that, but I'm gonna actually just give it a little bit of a, a little slanted edge. There you go, 
Okay, so that's my pen. I'm gonna set that aside. Now let's go, that's the end of my stamping. So I'm gonna go back and we're gonna do the watercoloring now. These are the watercolor pencils. All I need to do is I'm gonna do this all, old olive on all the leaves. And I'm kind of gonna do like a little bit of some scribbling. So let's go wherever the leaves are. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go here. And I'm just coloring dark right where the center of the vein is. So this part doesn't have to be necessarily like neat coloring, but I want to kind of do a little bit dark in the center there. Okay, I think that's all I want for that. And then I'm going to take the Bermuda Bay and I'm going to do the same thing on the flower. I'm just sort of scribbling a little bit on the center section, kind of dark. So you want to press a little bit so that you can get it dark. And I'm going to do a little bit up here and a little bit on this one. Have you done this before? Have you given this a try? The watercolor pencils are fabulous. It's great for just a softer look. There's a time and a place for the markers, but if you just want a softer look, the colored pencils are great for that. Um, okay, I think that's it for now. So let me just show you what I have so far. This is it. Okay, so it's a little bit scribbled on, only in the centers. I didn't do the whole thing. So now I'm gonna pull in a blender pen. If a blender pen is new to you, they come in a pack of three. They both tips, they're double tip, both tips are the same. And it is just clear. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go from the center of where I did my coloring here on the flower. And I'm just pulling out. And it pulls the color right out. And as it gets closer to the edge, it will get a little bit lighter. So that you'll have a darker, a darker shade in the center and then lighter around your edges. But do you see how quickly this is going? So you can do all the flower parts first. You can also, with a blender pen, you can pick up the ink color right from an ink pad if you want. That will come out a little bit darker. Oh, let's see, where else do I have flower up here? So we're gonna do all the Bermuda Bay first. Get these little guys up here. I'm just pulling out and it's it, it colors really well. Okay, so I think I have all the flowers. So then what I wanna do is I wanna, oh, I missed one. There we go, got it. And then I want to go into the green. So what I can do is I can use this exact same one and just going to go onto your scratch paper and just color until that Bermuda Bay color disappears. And then you can go right to the green color. And I'm going to do the same thing now with the leaves. I'm going all over the color that I already colored on there and I'm pulling out to the edges. And if you want it to be a little bit more, oops, oh, I just dropped the cap. It's okay. And if you want, if you do the whole thing and you realize, well, maybe I want a section a little bit more, just go back over it, add in a little bit more with the pencil and you can do that again. And then you can get it a little bit darker if you want that. Okay. So this just gives you another idea of how to color in your outline images. There are lots of options and this is just one. And this is only going to work with watercolor pencils. If you just have regular colored pencils, you're not going to be able to pull out the color like this. Okay, uh, let's see, a little bit up here, a little bit there, a little bit in there. And I think that we are done. I think I got all the sections. All right, that's good. And then when you're done with it again, just go on your scratch paper and just color until you get rid of the green color put the lid on it that I had dropped on the floor <laughs> and put that on and there you go. And these last a long time. 
Okay, so we're gonna take this now and I'm going to put, hang on, I didn't bring my adhesive. I don't know why I don't think of that sometimes. All right, so I'm using this stamp and seal. Again, if you're using stamp and seal, put it down, go straight back and then snap it. You gotta snap off or it will get gummy on you. So make sure you're snapping on the end. Every time I tell that in a class or somewhere, um, Legally Blonde comes up. You know, this um, bend and snap scene. If you don't know that movie, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put that down. Turn it over. Press it real well. Okay, now this paper ribbon that I talked about earlier. This is sometimes, um, I love using ribbon, but sometimes we don't have ribbon in the color that we want. You can take white ribbon and you can color that, but I'll leave that for another day. But this is just a piece of cardstock. And so this is old olive cardstock. Um, I cut it to an eighth of an inch and then I'm gonna use a bone folder. And I'm just gonna start pulling on it. And you can go back the other direction. And you don't wanna like pull really hard cause you'll just rip it. But you're gonna just gently keep pulling on it. And eventually it will pull apart. You're breaking up the fibers. So you're going to keep going. Kind of like when you do curling ribbons. Remember, it has been a long time since you've done that. We used to curl ribbons when we would wrap a present or something. It's that same idea. So you're going to keep going. I can start feeling it coming apart. So you keep going until you can feel it coming apart. And right here, look at that. See the paper will split. So I'm gonna pull that cardstock apart. And now because I did that, it's really soft. The cardstock is soft and pliable like a ribbon would be. Okay, so I'm gonna put some adhesive on the back here. And we're gonna take this little paper ribbon that I just made and lay that on the back. Okay, however you wanna do that, I'm just gonna grab some scissors. I'm just gonna trim this at different lengths like a ribbon would be. Okay, so there you go. So it has a little ribbon look to the back of it. Let's put some dimensionals on the back. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and take that and I'm going to put it right here. If you're stamping this and you go, oh shoot, I got a little bit of ink right here. Go ahead and take this piece then and put it up there. And maybe you can put a couple little um, gems or something down here. But there's always some way, I shouldn't say always, most of the time, there's a way that you can kind of cover if you did a little ink splot somewhere where you don't want it to be. But I'm going to go ahead and take this and set it right down here. And then there it is. There's my card for today. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope maybe you learned something here. If you liked it, you think someone else would benefit from it, hit that share button and share that with someone else. I greatly, greatly appreciate that. Um, but I just really hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something from it and it just inspires you to go create something. So talk with you later. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.